So you've all heard of the Korean number one Yasuo P. Zhang, but have you heard about Andy ZZ? He is China's number one Yasuo on the super server, and today we're watching him play into a talent. Now in the talent matchups, he likes to go ghost because he wants to be following the talent around the map. Yes, you'll fool ghost, something like the exhaust and ignite. But the idea is that you ghost, you're able to follow him into the river and maybe into a side lane. Plus, in the late game team fights, a Yasuo with ghost is going to be much better than a Yasuo with ignite. Um, obviously, you have plenty of damage. You just want that utility and ghost resets on kills now. So I'm interested to see how he maneuvers around this lane. Talent matchup, definitely a skill matchup as he makes his way around the minions. Look at the rune page, by the way, the bone plating helping the Yasuo out to forgo the talent damage. I have a talent with the first strike if he makes his way into a quick prowler's claw. May be able to one tap that Yasuo who doesn't have exhaust. And the question here for me today, gentlemen, is to determine, and this is probably impossible, but who is the better Yasuo, this guy or P Zhang? So P Zhang has three challenger smurfs at the moment. Main at 12, 1300 LP all season. This guy has been over a thousand points on the Chinese super server, but I've never really seen him hit that top 10 on the leaderboard. That P Zhang's been able to do even in Korea. Good win wall there. I'm gonna get the wave in as fast as humanly possible. Misses the cannon. And now looks to the top side roam, gets the shove. People ask me, someone someone asked me the other day, oh, maybe when's the perfect time to roam? The perfect time to roam, guys, is the window of when you hard shove and there's no minions getting crashed. You always have that little 10 second period with the minions, so if you card clear it into the wave, you can move around. That's the best time to roam. The second best time is simply when the enemy uh, bot or top is overextended. It's as simple as that. You can sack mid lane waves, sure. But the enemy team is going to be able to get plates. They're going to be able to get pushed because you haven't cleared that wave out first. And here we go. We're in the river first. We have Ghost. We have Flash. I want to see how he plays it. He's in. Hits the Ghost. Looking to use his Windmore. Absolutely cucks that Echo. And they get the kill. Now that Ghost gets the reset. He flashes forward. Gets Talon Flash. Now trying to make his way onto the Kale. Doesn't hit the Q. And he has to head his way out there. Not bad, not perfect. Definitely think he could have played a little bit more safe with the Q. Uh, Q flash that he tried to do. Could have just taken the sums, but it's fine. We should get a much better shove. And hopefully we're able to get a Zerka Greaves. Zerka Greaves first buy on Yasuo is optimal. You start to feel dangerous. And people told me that... Andy was a bit more of an aggressive P Zhang. P Zhang actually plays a lot of lanes, very safe, precautious. He'll CS 910 per minute, but he won't take like a 50 50 coin flip. He'll take a 55, maybe even not a 55 45. He'll take a 60 40 a lot of the times. Because on Yasuo, you're going to farm up, take over the game, but most Yasuos take too much risks in the early game. They don't get their items and they hard int. They get that 10 death power spike. A Yasuo that's behind is terrible. Don't get behind on Yasuo, as simple as that. Andy gets a Zerka Greaves, make his way back into the lane. Good freeze here. Pulls the wave. I'd be surprised if he finishes these last two. Yep, just let it sit. The wave will come very, very deep into the lane. Look at this, see? Mid lane is all about wave management, guys. If you're confused with how to manage your waves, watch champ. Watch players like uh, Chovy and Faker. They're usually the best at managing waves, from what I can tell in Solid Cute. That's how us higher level players get advantages in Silver. For nothing. Like, it's just free advantage. We don't have to win trades. We don't have to win anything. It's literally, we know how to manage the waves and auto-attack the waves, where, to, where they should be situated every time. Maybe we should be hard showing the waves. Maybe this next two minutes should be a freeze. We should be more defensive to the tower. Like, small things like that is what high level players just take advantage of lower elo players. But it doesn't even come down to mechanics, it's just simply game knowledge. As we're coming into level six, Talon. If we can get a dive here with the Talia, huge. I don't think it's quite possible though because of the ghost. I definitely think the ghost completely gets rid of your solo kill prowess until probably first or second item. Gives you more utility. It's definitely a better scaling rune, right? But it just kind of foregoes your lane. Which I don't like. I think in your low elo games, guys. Oh, nice. Very aggressive. If we could land the Q into an... Q 
auto ER? Maybe QE? I don't know. Max combo, I still think Talon lives there, just hits R and pieces out. See Talon getting pinged on the roam to the bot side. Oh, I love it. The Q should land just. And you'll, you'll start to see him use these waves here. Just in and out, zoning as much CS as possible. You don't have to take every ultimate you hit, guys. Every every knockup. Just be a slow and gradual. See Talon trying to get base in. It's not going to be allowed. And I'd love to see Talia look for a dive here. This would be an absolutely terrific dive for the Nautilus Roam. Both aren't happening though, so it's going to be all solo Andy. And he'll look for the plate. Oh, Q just goes wide. Every CS matters with this denial. This talent. Waste the W. And Mana's champion into Mana is just... It's never really been balanced. Q goes wide. He wants to really wants that plate. Ward's in the mid lane. You don't want to be the first to base. If you have your opponent on a bad base like this, hard chop. They have to miss a wave. Should be a play into a reset. It's the ultimate onto the Echo. So damn aggressive. He's not going to be able to get the plate, but he's able to force the Echo ult. And he'll head back now. Gets the zeal first into the shield bow usually. And honestly a pretty nice smooth early game. But nothing exciting, nothing too exciting, nothing too aggressive. I'm excited for the mid game because you have Aatrox Q, you have Talia W, you have Nautilus R, all the knockups. It should make his life so easy. And make sure to tell me in the comments down below who do you think is better, Pizang or Andy? I'm coming into it pretty biased, so I think you guys might know my answer, but I want to see... I've watched a little bit of this guy before, I just want to see a I, I, I want to see the end of the game to really make my mind up. This talent does get the roam off. Really wasn't much we could do about this. We could press an early ghost. I would love to see an early ghost here. Like a ghost round. Yep, there you go. Ghost comes in. And just going to get the free kill. Doesn't need to risk it on the... Oh. Oh. Should win more soon. That's one. Has to flash out. Nautilus doing a little bit of trolling. Oh, we hit the ultimate on the Ezreal. And we get it. Are we able to get a triple? Got to wait for the Ez the Echo clone to get out of the way. It still has ult, remember? He hits it. Andy going in. Jeez, that was clean, actually. He played that fight perfectly. Man, that looked good. This buy is going to be massive as well. We're going to get the Moon Quiver. Longsword. Control Ward. Double Control Ward. Damn. 150 Gold Sync on the controls. Something that I, a lot of the time, do, I feel like I'm sinking too much gold into controls. Sometimes as a mid lane mage, I, I sink, I buy 10 control wards in a game. And then if you start thinking about that, 750 gold. Not only that, the enemy team is clearing it out for 30 gold to pop. Are control wards overrated? Probably not. Vision is the most underrated thing in the game. But if you have a control ward that's con that you can contest, don't buy another. Contest a control ward and keep your gold, I think. Talon playing like a psycho. We're going to look to use the wave here. We do have ult. This Echo is just Usain Bolt speeding around. Can Nautilus land anything? He can't. And I don't think we want to chase the Echo around the map. It's going to be such a waste of time. Question mark, question mark, question mark. There we go. The 
Talon does have the Prowlers, but we're at 10 CS per minute. Looking huge. Clear that pink, please. No? Looking to get the Echo. He doesn't want to use the ultimate too quickly. Still has win will remember. Looking for the 1v2 play. Karma coming in. Get a little bit of lag. Sure. Tries to land the Q onto the Echo. And we're not able to make that work. That's a little bit greedy. Gave some gold over. You could tell the play he was looking for, but I think just slightly overextended with no sums, right? Moving down to bot lane. Looking like his team is... Even over one too many kills. It's 12 to 12, dead even game. Echo should be able to get the tower, but at what cost? For his life? Probably. Ghost procced. He lands. Jukes out, hits the ultimate, gets the karma, and now all eyes are on the Echo. And you can see just... Oh, that was really nice. I don't think he's going to live, though. You can see how good this ghost is, bro. Look how fast he is. Should be able to get the EQ, get the shutdown. What do you guys think about this ghost Yasuo? What the hell? The mobility is ridiculous. Like, in, at the start of a team fight, he just pricks, pop, hits Ghost and you you know you're done. Hit some plates up. We have enough for our Mythic now. It will be a Shield Bow. See how aggressive this Echo is looking to play. Oh my, that guy. Playing with fire. We don't have ult, we don't flash, so Andy just pieces out. He'll probably want to pick up a shield bone and start looking to drop into the side lane and look for 1v2, 1v3 plays. Good stop by Ezreal. Well done. Now he's got to back out. Talon is dead though, so it should be fine. Safer recall. Gonna to have to give the tower. Your has shield bow completed. Now it should be making his way towards the... Ooh, we're going to go for the Death Dance. Interesting. Doesn't go for the IE full damage. Going to go for the Death Dance. Uh, negate Talon's all-in potentials. Going to make life easy against... Everybody except the... Uh, the Echo is going to be slicing apart, but... And Yasuo with passive and shield bow. So darn tanky. Oh my god, this bloody Ezreal, dude. Stop it. The number one goal is Ezreal, just be a goddamn pest. Should be able to find this on the Karma. Oh, you could see he was thinking about Q flashing and opted against it. Definitely a good decision. Don't waste your flash on a support one for one kill as a Yasuo. Like almost as any champion, guys. Like people, and I do this so often, I flash for a kill at the end of the fight or, or, or things that just don't matter. The fight's already won. Why do I need to blow flash on a one for one at the end of the fight? That doesn't. I've already won the fight. We could get, we could get the, the objective. It's fine. Now, next objective, if I use the flash, I don't have it. We might lose because of that. Do you understand? Like holding your flash. For moments that it matters is so much more important than just getting a little bit of stat pad, an extra 300 gold. Come on now. It's dope training 101. As if you didn't recognize the setting, I'm currently in TF Blade's basement in Canada. It's quite nice. Very hot at the moment here. Reminds me of my, my home in Australia. Doing a month of boot camp here. Currently master tier on the NA server. And if you want to try and... Keep up with my journey. I'm across to my Twitch stream at Midbeast on Twitch. Streaming every day. Finding some specimens on the North American server. Played with this Skana guy the other day. Had a thousand Skana top lane games. And you'd think after mastering Skana of, ten, of, of a thousand games, he'd be able to win lane, but he didn't. Didn't even come close. Flash Ghost up for Andy. Hits the ultimate instantly onto the Kale. And you could see he was looking for the Flash predict on the Q. That ghost did reset, by the way. He's going to try and come through for the fight. Let's see if he's able to get on top of the Echo. He is going to flash for the Echo here. And he does get that kill. 
Flashing there to get the kill. Probably, I mean... The fight was won. Probably goes against everything I just said earlier, but... This is going to enable him to get the mid lane tower and maybe a better dragon set up as the 10 seconds for the spawn, I think. Sorry, we're getting a little bit of lag on the Chinese website. And what do you think, guys? I want to see Andy Yasuo versus P. Zhang Yone. I would pay infinite amounts of money to see that. It'd be like uh, the, the the Rocky versus Muhammad Ali fight. Or Mike Tyson or whatever. I don't I don't watch boxing. Whatever. I don't think Rocky's a real boxer. We have ults. Knock up lands. Ultimate. Doesn't need to be used. Gonna clear out the pink now. He's sitting on 2500. He's gonna head back for the death dance very soon. Team has pressure, so he doesn't want to give it up. A lot of the times... Oh my god, he's gonna die. Wind Wall saves his life. Really good value. That's such a good ability. Hits the ultimate onto the Talon. They do clear him out. And now he's looking to juke on the Ezreal Qs. And I think that's enough, guys. We're sitting on too much gold. Oh. I was about to say this. A lot of people in lower elos, as Echo tries for the turn back, I think he trolled that. A lot of people in lower elos, guys, they just get enough gold for their mythic and they instantly have to base. Your team has pressure or a dragon or baron setup is happening. Don't go to the base and lose every bit of pressure that you've just built. Don't go and cross map and get a blue buff because you're a mid lane mage and you're meant to get a blue buff. Keep the pressure on on the map. If your team has it, don't drop it for nothing, okay? It's a big thing that players, like if you watch TF Blade play, he just constantly has pressure on the side lane. He doesn't force bases when he has items. He force he gets a base when there's no more pressure to be had on the map. To be forced. We get the IE. He doesn't end up going the DD. He has the outright IE buy. He says, ah, uh, I'm going pure damage. The chain vest is going to allow him to survive the Yasuo, sorry, the uh, Talon burst. And he'll be on his way. Please, if he lands this, I swear to God. Hits it into the ultimate. Nautilus gets the KS. But still, phenomenally played. That's going to be a Baron setup 20 minutes in. When 190 CS at 20. Enemy team can't make it in. Might throw a win wall. He holds the win wall. Doesn't even use it. I was always something... Enemy team has an Ezreal, he's always going to throw towards the Baron. You can just sit and wait for the Windmall. God, I love- dude, the feeling of playing Yasuo like this when you're this far ahead, it's like crack. Not that I've done any drugs or do any drugs or crack, but I've been told that it would probably feel something like it. Find the Talon. Insta Ignite Press. Wind Wall. Doesn't actually do anything. We do have the Ghost. Not really scared of it. Oh, good turn. Not really scared for him. He has a three level advantage over the Talon and the Chain Vest. Shield Bow. Passive also up. He's just going to hard shove this lane. I miss the days of Triforce, Static, Shiv, Yasuo. Anyone in the chat has played Triforce, Static, Shiv, Yasuo back in the day, Season 5 or 6, I think it was? Holy moly. Any knock-ups? Nope. And they're going to run this through. I think they can get an end if they get a good pick. Nautilus ult up in 6. It's the ult, gets the echo. Echo has no ult, they take him down. 
He hasn't even pressed his ghost yet. Waiting for it. Win wall. Now we ghost. Let's see. Let's see the movement. Okay. He's just got to... Oh my god. He holds his flash. I just shit myself. Nice. And we have to head back into the base. We have enough of the death dance here. And it's probably still going to be a dub. Sell the... You should be able to sell the Dorans. Oh no. Wait a second. Sell the Dorans for the death dance. Quick, quick, quick. Fast, 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 fast. Control. Nice. And the question mark frog emote. <laughs> like, guys, what are we doing? He played way too aggressively there, in my opinion. They could have just slowly played it, but he wanted to try and test limits. As we're at that 100% crit mark, feeling huge. Have to give the dragon, though. And I love this tank Twitch build, by the way. I see a lot of it. I love it. Like it's a champion that really benefits being tanky. You just surprise them. They think they can one-tap you. They can't. And you get the 1v1. Look how slow he's playing. He needs to wait for the team's pressure. Get some vision out. Gets Talon, gets two, hits the ultimate. And this is going to be close. Q flash onto that. Does get stunned up now. Has to make his way out. Kale comes in. Doesn't have win more. Doesn't have flash. I want to see how he plays it. He might go down here. Death Dance burning, 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 burning. And he needs to go and kill Gromp and heal back up. Make his way through. I want to see what Twitch can get done though. Twitch opening up. Does get the Ezreal. And this should be a one team fight. Just... Thank you, Mr. Grump. He's going to heal. Oh, he might be able to find the Kyle. Kyle, 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 Kyle. Yes, into the knockup. There we go, baby. They should be able to run it down here for the win. And you can see why he is Yasuo's... Sorry, he is China's number one Yasuo, guys. The guy is very clean. He's crisp. He's smart. Had a couple moments here where he tried to go a little bit too crazy. But once again, it's not that craziness of a Silver 3 Yasuo with 20 kills. Those Yasuos aren't playing crazy, they're playing stupid. They have a Ferrari, and they're on their learner's permit, and they're drifting. They're drifting in the countryside next to mountains. You're gonna fall off, the Ferrari's gonna lock up, you can't drive. Pizang, Andy, they're F1 drivers, man. Huge ER. Gets the Karma. Moves back in. Oh my god, these dashes. He does end up going down though. And he goes off the cliff. Clear. So luckily picks up the Kyle. And I don't think you want this Kale getting 16. Dot dot 14. Don't throw it for me, big man. Please don't throw it for me, big man. 2k gold sitting in the base. A little bit of magic just wouldn't be that bad. Obviously, you can't go Hex Shrink up. I'm going to finish the mortal into a stopwatch, I'm going to say. Stopwatch with Verse Bite. We'll have no flash and ghost up for the next fight. Ooh. Get that stoppy, son. Stoppy toppy completed. We have the... GA coming next, but I don't think this game's going to last that long. I think this next team fight determines the game. Literally both sides, by the way. You can see Echo almost has death cap. Tank Twitch. He gets one shot. For absolutely no reason, as per usual. And they're actually pretty angry at this guy because he's making the game impossible. Kale now gets to farm side lane. Ouch. And if they start this Nash, it could be absolutely all over Red Rover. They're just trying to bait them out. They're not starting. Good macro. Finds the Talon. Andy on the wrong side of the fight, though. Doesn't have Flash, has Ghost. Twitch just spawned. 
And we're going to need a really good Talia flick, I think. They do have the mid lane wave, though. Red side super pressured. Sorry, blue side really pressured. You can see the supers making their way in. Now they want to start the Nash. They can also just rush it here. And he has the right idea. Full vision, but I don't think it's going to matter. Look at the Twitch looking for the flank. It's going to be a turn. Andy wants to finish it, though. Echo makes his way in. Instantly pops over onto the Echo. And I'm wondering where we're going to use the Ghost. We get the Karma, but that's it for now. Wait for it. Ezreal picks up the Twitch. Little quick little spam ping over. And he wants that, he wants, he wanted that knock up onto the Kale. He gets it. Comes through. Wind War gonna block all the damage coming. Flick is dodged. Huge. Gets the Kale now. He has the huge wave to play with as well. Slices apart the Echo. Finds the talent. Ghost is proc. Look how fast this guy is. He wants to pick up the Ezreal, and he does. Probably don't go for the Karma. And that's going to be game, ladies and gentlemen. That's Andy ZZ, Yasuo, best in China. Let me know in the comments down below who you think is the better Yasuo. For me, I'm still out for game with my boy P Zane. But Andy is clean, and I want to see them have a matchup against each other. Until next time, boys, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.